Comprehensive, relevant, and insightful conversations about health and medicine happen here on MedStar Health Doc Talk. For any number of reasons, a doctor might order a CT lung scan or a chest x-ray for a patient. Maybe you've had one yourself. But what happens if that diagnostic test reveals a shadow or a spot on the lung? The doctor might refer to it as a coin lesion. Whatever you call it, the appearance of a lung nodule or nodules shouldn't be ignored. To understand what lung nodules are, how they're tested and treated, We've invited Dr. Zeev Gamliel, who is the Chief of Thoracic Surgery at the Angelo Center for Lung Diseases at MedStar Franklin Square Medical Center in Baltimore to be our guest here on MedStar Health Doc Talk. I'm your host, Deborah Schindler. Thank you for being here, Dr. Gamliel. Hi, Deborah. Thanks for having me. With lung cancer being the leading cause of cancer deaths in America, anyone learning that they have a lung nodule is rightfully concerned. So I think it's important to say right up front that half of adults who get a chest X-ray or CT scan will have a lung nodule show up, and that according to the American Cancer Society, most nodules are not cancerous. Has that been your experience? Lung nodules are very common. A lung nodule could represent cancer, could represent infection, could represent an abnormal immune response, could represent a scar. So many people have lung nodules just because of the experience of going through life on earth. Think of a car as old as you. Would that car not have some dings and dents and scratches on it? It's not too much different when it comes to your lungs. They will accumulate scars just from past infections that you've had or other illnesses. Well, that's an interesting concept to think of a scar inside of the lung. Um, I mean, how does that come about? And if it's not a scar, what else might a lung nodule be? Right. So The term lung nodule, I find, is very confusing for patients. They don't know what it means. A lung nodule is really nothing more than a spot on your lung, some kind of abnormal spot that the doctor is seeing on the imaging study, whether it's a chest X-ray or a CAT scan. The term nodule doesn't imply a specific diagnosis or underlying cause. So as it turns out, the majority of small lung nodules that we see on patients' chest X-rays or CAT scans turn out to just be non-cancerous scars from previous illnesses that don't really require any kind of treatment or follow-up. The problem is that these innocent lung nodules really look no different than some of the more sinister or worrisome lung nodules that are caused by underlying illnesses or even cancer. And that's why you need a medical expert to help you to determine if your lung nodule is something that needs to be acted upon or if it needs to be watched or if it can be ignored. Can you ever tell when you're looking at an image if it is cancer? I mean, if I came home knowing that I got an image back and it showed a nodule, can I rest assured that, oh, well, if it was cancerous, they would have known? So often I find that patients are wondering why we can't be certain when we're seeing an imaging study whether their nodule or the spot on their lung is or isn't cancer. And the answer is because the imaging study isn't really showing us what is there. It's showing us a shadow of what is there. And we can be fooled by whatever that thing is in the lung if we're looking just at the shadow of the thing, trying to guess what it is. So when we're looking at these imaging studies that are showing us that there is something in there making a shadow of a spot on the lung, we can make educated guesses as to whether that spot on the lung is something very suspicious for cancer or not very suspicious for cancer or somewhere in between. How big is that spot or shadow, would you say, normally? Interesting question. That's one of the factors that might lead us to be more suspicious or less suspicious. When a nodule is really tiny, like a grain of rice or a lentil, it is statistically most likely to be non-cancerous. Only a tiny fraction of nodules that small will grow to the point where we can tell that they are behaving badly and are likely to be cancer. But if we see a big thing in the lung, say the size of a cherry tomato or an apricot, that is not so likely to be something innocent and non-cancerous. That is more likely to be something worrisome like cancer. Would that spot or shadow have been what led the patient to get a CT scan in the first place? 
place? I mean, is there, there are symptoms, right? So interestingly, these spots or nodules in the lung typically don't cause any symptoms and are most often discovered by accident. So typically a patient will have some kind of respiratory or breathing symptoms. They're short of breath or they're coughing or they're wheezing and their doctor will appropriately order an x-ray or a CAT scan to determine if they have pneumonia or emphysema or some other medical condition. And lo and behold, and completely by surprise, something else is discovered in addition, a lung nodule or a spot on the lung, not something that is related to the patient's symptoms, not something that we were even thinking was likely to be there, but something that happened to turn up. And that's really what starts this whole story for patients that show up with lung nodules needing medical advice. So if someone has had pneumonia, does that lead to maybe a nodule or scarring? Absolutely could. Often a pneumonia will resolve completely and leave no trace, but also quite often a pneumonia will resolve and leave some kind of damage behind in the lung, maybe damage that is not severe enough to impair a person's breathing, but that might leave a mark on their CAT scan or on their chest X-ray as a souvenir of that pneumonia. If it is just a scar from their pneumonia, we really don't expect that such a finding would enlarge over time. Mm -hmm. These scars resulting from damage to the lung typically remain exactly the same. Sometimes they even shrink, but they definitely don't enlarge if they're innocent. So I've used cleaners before that have had an impact on my lungs. And I've wondered if I've done any permanent damage to my lungs from that. Do you think that would cause scarring? There might be damage to your lung from inhaling toxic fumes. That kind of damage typically doesn't result in specific scars or spots on the lung. Okay, it good. could, but it might impair your lung function. So I don't recommend breathing toxic fumes, certainly. Um, usually when we see a scar on the lung, it's the result of some process in the lung that is in one area of the lung rather than affecting all over both lungs. Who finds the nodules on the image um, after a scan is done? And does the scan come to you for diagnosis? Uh, walk me through the diagnostic process. So very often imaging studies are obtained by primary care providers who are sort of general health care providers who are trying to figure out why their patient is coughing or why they're short of breath, trying to find out if they have pneumonia or some other lung disease. And when they look at the report of that study, the report will mention a spot on the lung or a nodule. That primary care provider might not feel confident about sorting out whether that nodule is something to worry about or whether that nodule can just be watched or even ignored. And so very often that primary care provider will enlist some expert help, either from a pulmonologist or a thoracic surgeon. Describe for me what a thoracic surgeon actually is. Back in, I believe it was second grade, we studied insects and we learned that insects have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen in addition to their six legs. Thorax is just a $10 word for chest. So a thoracic surgeon is nothing more than a surgeon who specializes in operations on the chest. Not so much the outside of the chest, but the inside of the chest more often. And as it turns out, most of that work in North America in these days, involves operations for lung cancer. So you could have went the direction of cardiac or become an open-heart surgeon and worked in that part of the chest, but you chose lung. What compelled you to go in the direction of pulmonology? That is really such a difficult question to answer. I think I was turned on to non-cardiac thoracic surgery when I was a medical student in the operating room and watched a lung operation and I saw a bunch of heads leaning over an open chest and a lot of murmuring going on. And then at the end of the operation, it was time to inflate the lung back to its full inflation. And when I saw that lung inflate, I thought, wow, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. I guess I don't have any explanation better than that other than I think lungs are cool. So you went into medical school, though, not really knowing what direction you would go. You just discovered That's it. absolutely true. Interesting. Absolutely true. No regrets. Um, should have been a dentist like my mother told me, but <laughs> I think that 
I would have made a terrible dentist. <laughs> now, what's your best case? What's your best case if you had to define your career? What makes you feel most proud? I think that the biggest privilege that I have is taking people who are really scared and really pessimistic and helping them to calm down, helping them to feel like they are taking charge of their lives, helping to guide them through a very, very difficult period in their life and getting them to the other side of that darkness with a happy ending, the real reward for me comes when I get to see them at their annual follow-up visits and give them good news every year saying that's another year cancer-free. And you know, that first year cancer-free is a milestone, but I now have patients that are 22 years, 23 years cancer-free, wow. and I know them, I know their family members, I know their life stories and we reminisce about old times. And that's really the payoff for me is I know that I was fortunate enough to be there at the right time in the right place to really help a person get their life back together and really get to where they are now. What's your most unusual case, would you say? Um, years ago, a patient came to see me because they had a very large mass in their chest and they were very worried that it was a bad cancer and that their life was over doing a little digging as it turned out about 18 years earlier, that patient was told that they had a little nodule in their lung and that it was benign and they didn't need to worry about it. The years went by and that benign lung nodule stayed benign. It wasn't cancer, but it happened to grow and grow and grow to the point where it became the size of a bowling ball and was taking up a lot of space. The patient was managing just fine somehow but when we did a biopsy and it showed that this large mass was not cancer, that was definitely a blessing. We operated on the patient, took that big mass out of their chest. Their lung finally had room to expand to its intended size because this bowling ball was no longer in their chest cavity. They had a feeling that they were lighter than they were before, which is literally true, but also they just felt a lightness by not having to wow. walk around with that big heavy mass in their chest. And they went back to their normal life. And that was really a scary situation that turned out to have a fairly straightforward solution and a happy ending. I imagine they could breathe a lot better. They could. That's true. So are you going to see more patients as time goes on now that we've had COVID? Uh, is that going to create nodules, people who have had COVID? COVID most often doesn't leave any scars in the lung, but not infrequently it might. And so because of COVID, some people have developed scars in their lung that might look like they could be cancerous. And so patients with those kinds of abnormal shadows on their x-rays or CAT scans not infrequently need to be monitored to see if that abnormal shadow in their lung is enlarging. Typically, if it's a scar from COVID, it's not going to enlarge. It'll stay the same, or sometimes over time, it might even shrink. But we are evaluating some scars in lungs that are the result of bad infections with COVID. And are those patients then referred to the nodule clinic at MedStar Franklin Square? Absolutely. They certainly might be. And I think that the trick for us is to have the expertise to be able to sort out and separate and distinguish the nodules that need to be acted upon and the nodules that can be watched because we want to avoid doing unnecessary procedures on people. What is the nodule clinic? Tell me about that. The Nodule Clinic is part of the Angelos Center for Lung Diseases at MedStar Franklin Square. It's a relatively cozy and inviting place where people are interested in helping patients who have lung nodules. The people that are players in this lung nodule clinic are administrative assistants, medical assistants, nurses, nurse navigators, thoracic team. surgeons, pulmonologists and interventional pulmonologists, diagnostic radiologists, interventional radiologists, and others. Um, and this is a team that mobilizes to try and get people the best answers as to what their lung nodule is and the best recommendations as to what to do about their lung nodule, if anything. I spend a lot of my career evaluating patients who come to see me about spots on their lung. Having the experience that I have I'm trained to have an expert kind of bias so that I can sniff out which are the nodules that are more worrisome, which are the nodules that are less worrisome, whether we can just tell the patient, don't worry about it, this is nothing, you can ignore it, whether we can tell the patient, we need to keep an eye on this and watch it closely, or whether I have to tell the patient, boy, this looks like something bad and we really need to investigate this and probably remove it. 
But how are you doing that? How do you determine whether or not this needs further exploration? So there are many ways to evaluate a lung nodule. In addition to a chest x-ray, CAT scans are very helpful. PET scans are very helpful. And then there are also a variety of biopsy techniques that can be used to take teeny tiny little samples of these nodules where a lab can let us know what they see in that nodule. Biopsy. I do want to pause for a second because before we get to that stage, isn't there... Uh, not everybody's going to need a biopsy or, or you're not going to require one from everyone, correct? What's the first step once a nodule is found? You know, not every nodule can be biopsied. Some nodules are in really out of the way areas in the lung that are hard to reach. Some nodules are just too darn small to biopsy. And that's a good problem if your lung nodule is that tiny. Some nodules are just so scary looking that we feel like we have to take them out and that a biopsy wouldn't really convince us to leave it in there. Um, And then there are nodules that are somewhere in between where they're kind of worrisome, but they might be okay. And if we're not sure, then we get a biopsy to help us sort it out. Okay. Once a nodule has been found on an x-ray or a lung scan, what's the next step? The next step is to consult an expert. And that could be a pulmonologist or it could be a thoracic surgeon. And what that expert will do is they will do a very thorough medical history to find out if you have any risk factors for cancer, whether it's lung cancer or some other kind of cancer, whether you've had a history of exposures to infectious agents that might have left scars in your lung. And they will also want to size you up to see how medically fit you are to handle more invasive procedures like tests, or operations. Um, After they do their thorough history, they'll examine you to find any other clues that might help them to guess what your lung nodule is. And then based on how the lung nodule appears on your imaging study, they'll tell you if they recommend that it should be removed, if they recommend that it should be biopsied, if they recommend that it should just be followed with additional scans down the road, or whether you can just ignore it. So that leads us to the biopsy. How is that done? Who is a candidate for that? So let's clarify what the word biopsy means. A biopsy means that you're finding out what something is by taking a teeny tiny little piece of it, a microscopic piece usually. And so a biopsy is very often done by sticking a needle into the nodule or lump that is inside the lung. There are two main approaches to sticking a needle into a lung nodule. One approach is to do it from the outside. That is done using an interventional radiologist, typically someone who uses CAT scan guidance to advance a needle through the skin, in between the ribs, into the lung, into the lung nodule, watching the entire time, using CAT scan imaging, and when they see that their biopsy needle is situated in the right spot inside this lung nodule, they literally suck out a teeny tiny sliver of this lump from the lung and send that sliver to the lab to be studied under the microscope. Based on the microscopic appearance, we can tell whether what we're seeing is cancer or something else. Now, this is not a guaranteed procedure because it's not always possible to get a needle to go directly into the lung nodule, although we've gotten pretty good at it over the decades. And the other issue is that sometimes when we suck a specimen out of that lung nodule, we don't get enough that we can actually tell what we're looking at. So we need to be able to hit the nodule and we need to be able to get an adequate specimen for evaluation. Those goals are accomplished most of the time, but there are biopsies that are non-diagnostic or unsuccessful. An unsuccessful biopsy is when the radiologist couldn't hit the nodule, or a non-diagnostic biopsy is when the specimen that was obtained wasn't really adequate for evaluation. They just didn't get enough. And if they don't hit the nodule, is the same biopsy uh, approach used again? Sometimes we'll do round two, and that is something that would typically come up if the radiologist who did the procedure feels like there was some issue that prevented them from doing it well that they can then modify and that they feel confident that if they try it again, maybe by changing their approach, they might hit it better. 
Um, but most often, if that approach doesn't work, we would try something different. And by trying something different, what I mean is we can try and get a tiny little uh, microscopic piece of the lung nodule from inside the lung using a device called a bronchoscope, which is a flexible, skinny telescope that goes down the windpipe and is steered through the bronchial tree as close as possible to the lung nodule using imaging guidance and nowadays actually using a robotic device to steer it in the most advantageous way. When we get that long, skinny, flexible telescope through the airways as close as possible to the lung nodule, we can then push a needle out through that scope and aim that needle into the lung nodule, effectively skewering it. And when we have the needle stuck in the lung nodule, similar to the external approach done by a radiologist, the bronchoscopist can suck out a little sliver from the nodule. That sounds like a much more effective approach. Why not just leap right to that one and skip the needle biopsy? As it turns out, each approach has scenarios where it has advantages and each approach has scenarios where it has disadvantages. A needle biopsy done by a radiologist through the skin does not require general anesthesia. We can certainly provide patients with sedation to make it less scary and have them happier through the procedure, but they don't have to be put to sleep. Um, and we also have real-time imaging uh, confirmation of the trajectory of the needle. Um, a bronchoscopy does require a general anesthetic. And although we do imaging throughout the study, we're not often watching the needle as it enters the nodule. That can be done in certain circumstances. In certain circumstances, it might not be possible. So sometimes we're just hoping for the best with that approach. Um, the bronchoscopy approach, where we're biopsying the nodule from inside the lung, is especially helpful for lung nodules that are deep inside the lung and closer to the bronchial tree. Lung nodules that are farther out in the lung and closer to the rib cage are going to be more directly approached from the outside. And so there is absolutely a judgment call about which approach is most likely to be successful and which approach to try first. And when I'm referring a patient for a biopsy, I might refer them to a radiologist for an external needle biopsy, or I might refer them to a bronchoscopist for an internal bronchoscopic biopsy. And sometimes I'll have both experts weigh in on how confident they are about being able to hit the nodule. And whichever expert feels like their approach is more likely to work will usually get the first crack at it. So the needle biopsy is done. The radiologist feels it is a fail. Does the next approach come in at the same time or are they separately scheduled? It's a separate procedure done in a separate area of the hospital by a different team using completely different equipment. Got it. So it typically gets scheduled for a different date. Um, and not always would it be feasible to try the other approach if the first approach doesn't work. So sometimes if we fail, we have to regroup and think of another idea rather than doing a biopsy. And then once it's done and the, the tissue is extracted, how long does it take to get results? There are biopsies that are very straightforward, and we might have results even the next day. And then there are biopsies that really take a lot more work to try and sort out and they might need multiple rounds of tests to figure out. There are even biopsies that get sent out to other institutions where there is a particular expert in a particular kind of lung disease that might examine the biopsy. And so it sometimes happens that biopsies take three weeks or more to come back. But typically within three to four days, we can have a result. Very anxious time for patients. It is. So. I think not knowing is a very scary time. Right. But... I think that what I would say to patients is realize that your lung nodule isn't causing you any symptoms. We are concerned about the possibility that your lung nodule might cause you trouble in the future, but we're getting there before it has really had a chance to bother you. And so taking a few days to figure it out is a good investment. That is time well spent. The reason is that what we're trying to decide is whether your lung nodule needs to be removed with a lung operation. And while that's what I do for a living and I like to help people by operating on their lungs and removing bad things from their lungs, 
Sometimes patients don't need that, and I definitely don't want to be performing lung surgery that isn't necessary. So you had jumped ahead to my next question, which was, will treatment be needed if it, it's not cancerous? So, there are times where it's just hard to say whether we should or shouldn't remove something. And there are situations where I'm having a heart-to-heart -heart with my patient asking them, what would give you more peace of mind? Would it give you more peace of mind to get rid of this thing by undergoing lung surgery? Or would it give you more peace of mind to avoid an operation that might be unnecessary and just bear with me for a while while we continue to check on this periodically with scans every so often? And, you know, there are times where there isn't a clearly correct or incorrect answer and where I take my cues from the patient. And some patients are absolutely motivated to get rid of anything that might have a remote chance of being cancer. And some patients are much more interested in avoiding any surgery that they don't absolutely have to have. And so we do try and tailor our recommendations to the patient. So let's say you have to take the nodule out, whether it's patient driven or you feel that it's necessary. How does that happen? So the important thing in operating on patients is to realize that surgery usually goes very well and patients usually make a complete recovery, but we can't take that for granted. And I think that the old adage of measure twice and cut once is really important. So I think that it is important to take a moment to evaluate the patient and make sure that going into surgery the odds are stacked as heavily in their favor as possible. The last thing anybody wants is for a patient to have some bad complication from undergoing lung surgery. And so it's important to make sure that a patient has enough extra lung capacity that a patient is not at high risk of a stroke or a heart attack from their often many years of smoking before their lung nodule was diagnosed. And so after we do a thorough preoperative evaluation to make sure that a patient is not at especially high risk, then we can go into surgery feeling confident that things are going to go well. Now, when I was starting my training in the 1980s, lung surgery was done through a long cut in between the ribs. We would spread the ribs apart and get our hands into the patient's chest and do what we needed to do to remove the bad section of the lung. We still do that but not very often anymore. Mm. Over the last several decades, techniques have been increasingly refined that allow us to do the same job on the inside that used to require 10 fingers inside the patient, but now using long, slender instruments, what I call my chopsticks. And so using a few long, skinny tools, we can readily visualize the lung, manipulate the lung, dissect blood vessels and bronchi, divide structures. It's really been a game changer. Minimally invasive surgery has made it much more fun to operate and has made it much less difficult for patients to recuperate from surgery. Yeah. What is that like once you've had a piece of your lung removed, even a smaller piece of lung nowadays, that, as you just described, does that change the breathing capacity? Can they run? So it that is a hugely important issue in lung surgery. Um, we want to make sure that when all is said and done and when the patient is recovered from their surgery, that they are left with a really good quality of life. Unfortunately, removing a portion of your lung will never improve your quality of life. But if we've removed something like cancer, then it might certainly prolong your life. The good thing is that most patients have much more lung capacity than they really require in order to have a good quality of life. So even though removing a portion of your lung will necessarily reduce your lung capacity, if you're starting out with much more than you need and you're ending up with still more than you need, you'll probably have a quality of life that is not too much different than what you had before lung surgery. And we want to make sure that Patients are not having to change their lifestyle for the worse as a result of their lung surgery. And that is an honest discussion that we have before surgery, where based upon our detailed preoperative testing, we can estimate what a patient's lung capacity will be after surgery. Really, the message is, I think that most patients are able to carry on their lives much the same fashion as before their lung surgery. Do you ever go in and take out more than one nodule at a time? There are patients who have multiple lung nodules. 
not all of a patient's lung nodules necessarily require the same treatment. Some of their lung nodules might need to come out. Some of their lung nodules might need to be monitored. And some of their lung nodules might be possible to ignore. So even if you have more than one lung nodule, you don't necessarily need surgery for all of your lung nodules. But there are cases where we do remove more than one. Sometimes more than one lung nodule is present in the same portion of the lung, and sometimes we have to remove separate portions of the lung in order to remove separate lung nodules. What uh, distinguishes a lung tumor from a lung nodule? Is it the size or the malignancy? A tumor is an abnormal growth of tissue. That is different from a scar. A scar is not an abnormal growth. A scar is a normal growth that results from damage to the lung. Scars, generally speaking, are not dangerous. Scars in your lung, that is. Um, Tumors are sometimes dangerous and sometimes not. Tumors are abnormal growths. Some of those abnormal growths are cancer. Some of those abnormal growths are non-cancerous. Cancerous growths do need treatment sometimes by removal, sometimes by other methods. Non-cancerous growths sometimes need removal, sometimes don't. With non-cancerous growths, we remove them if we're concerned that they are going to continue to enlarge to the point where they start pushing on things, taking up too much space. I have in my career removed non-cancerous growth the size of bowling balls from people's chests because they've grown to the size where they're compressing on things. We certainly don't ever want to let a situation get to that point if we think that there is a real concern that a non-cancerous growth is likely to continue to grow and cause trouble by enlargement. We would take it out as soon as it's feasible to do that and before It causes trouble. The good news is that even that bowling ball sized growth that was not cancerous is not really something that we worry about when it comes to spreading to other parts of the body. And so even a large non-cancerous growth is cured by removing it. Cancerous growths, on the other hand, can also enlarge, but beyond enlarging, the concern is they can spread to other parts of the body. The sooner you get in there, the less likelihood that cancer has of spreading and the more likelihood we have of achieving a cure. Who's a typical patient for who, who comes to you with lung nodules? Who gets them? So earlier we talked about how often lung nodules are the result of previous illnesses. Younger folks haven't really had a chance to have that many illnesses and accumulate lung nodules. So generally lung nodules are less common in younger folks. But By the time you get to middle age or old age, you've had plenty of time on God's green earth to accumulate all sorts of damage to your lung and are pretty likely to have at least some innocent scars in your lung. We might not be able to tell right off the bat that what we're seeing is an innocent scar because often the good guys and the bad guys look very much the same on an x-ray or a CAT scan. It might take some time and effort to sort out whether your lung nodule is something worrisome or something not worrisome. Um, The other thing is that patients who have had any kind of occupational exposures to hazardous materials not infrequently have damage to their lungs that can result in scars or nodules. And certainly patients who smoke are at risk of developing cancerous lung nodules in their lungs. The news doesn't stop with, here's what your lung nodule is. That's just the beginning. The real news is, so what do we need to do about the results of this biopsy? Do we need to try the biopsy again? Can we heave a sigh of relief and say, oh, thank heaven, that's not anything we need to worry about? Or do we need to proceed towards lung surgery or some other form of treatment? And that's really the important conversation. What's the takeaway today? The message is that lung nodule is not a diagnosis. Lung nodule is a problem that needs to be solved. And having expert help in your corner is a good idea. So if you do have a lung nodule that's discovered quite often by accident, as we discussed, it's a good idea to recruit some expert advice from a pulmonologist or a thoracic surgeon and have an expert opinion on whether anything further needs to be done for that lung nodule. I think that this is a time in history when we have more options than ever before for diagnosing lung nodules and for treating lung nodules. And I must say that 
Very often, patients who come seeking medical attention for a lung nodule are given a happy ending to that problem. Wonderful. Thank you. And thank you for what you do. It's an honor, and it's a pleasure. Thank you. We've been talking with Dr. Ziv Gamliel at MedStar Franklin Square Medical Center in Baltimore. Thank you for sharing your expertise with us here on Doc Talk. For more information on lung nodules or the Lung Nodule Clinic, visit MedStarCancer.org. Or to make an appointment, call 443-777-1133.